We're back live here at the Cassandra Summit. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Jeff Kelly, uh, lead big data analyst from Wikibon, and we're joined here with Terrell Depp from uh, Health, Healthcare Anytime, CTO there. Uh, welcome to the Cube. Well, thank you. It's your first time, first time on the Cube, and we promise it'll be an enjoyable experience, right, John? Yeah. So our goal here is to really kind of get to the events and extract the signal from the noise. People want to know what's going on with Cassandra uh, in the big data space. Uh, there's been deba debates that range from proper which language to use, NoSQL versus SQL, relational databases, you know, the latest shiny new toy, whatever that is, people like to talk about it, but really what we found is big data is really changing business with uh, mobile and with dashboards like the Nexus 7 and the iPad, you know, real-time analytics data, fast data to the edge of the network is really viable and, and uh, excited to talk to you about that because you know, what better place than the medical profession do you want to have <laughs> information at your fingertips um, because it's life and death, it's not just business, um, doctors are out in the field, so you know, healthcare, um, healthcare is a really viable space. So, is big data a reality? That's my first question for you in, in, in the hospital space. Obviously tablets are relevant, but they big are. data, give us the state of the union for big data there. Yeah, the big data, uh, unfortunately, is getting some pretty slow adoption, and uh, I attribute that primarily to the, uh, the kind of inside the box thinking. You know, healthcare is not known for its rapid technology adoption. The, uh, as a result, new technologies are even slower to catch on. And when we start looking at solving problems in healthcare, we have to think very much outside the box. And, and uh, you, cannot, you cannot take a, an individual patient and put them in a situation where uh, you, the information you collect on them is the same as the patient that you saw previously. Every patient, every episode of care is going to be absolutely different, even for the same problem. You know, your heart attack and my heart, heart attack may be completely different. Um, your follow-up visit is going to be different from my follow-up to visit. How do you take that data and put it into something that can be mined successfully so that you get decent analytics out of it. You simply can't put it into a traditional two-dimensional data model. And also like not a, all the records are digitized too, right? I mean, that's another problem, right? That, that's a completely separate problem. <laughs> that's a problem that's, that's more of a cultural problem. Yeah. And again, it goes back to the, uh, the, the adoption of technology being very slow. Yeah, so one of the debates, so there's, you know, we want to talk about the whole digitization. I know Obama's got this big money pot out there trying to get people to, you know, $2 billion to digitize content, yet it costs millions to get it going, so you don't get any money, you have to invest, on it. so that's a whole nother disaster. We can talk about that later. But really the issue at, 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 at stake here is this debate about schema and schema lists, right? So in the hospital business, there's a lot of database work, and with HIPAA, regulations around data, it's a factor. Is that a factor, or is it not a factor, or is my, I, mean, I don't know much about it, but that seems like it could be a factor. Well, anytime you're talking about regulations and compliance, it's going to be a factor. And for a company like Healthcare Anytime, it's a big factor. And it, and it goes beyond just the clinical aspect, it goes into the financial aspect, because we have to not only be HIPAA compliant, we also have to be PCI compliant. And uh, you know, getting that data, keeping that data secure, accessing that data in a timely manner, that's what big data is all about. So, you know, for our viewers out there who might not uh, be that familiar with healthcare anytime, why don't you tell us about uh, kind of what you guys do, your core product, um, and this patient portal and kind of bringing in data from multiple sources. So, tell tell our audience a little bit about what you guys do, and then maybe we can talk a little bit about kind of how you do it. Well, the the uh, the core purpose for healthcare anytime's existence is for the purpose of of satisfying the patient need. It's patient facing mm -hmm. healthcare. That's a, a, a market that has been grossly underutilized, under leveraged, mostly because there's no money in it. Mm -hmm. And part of the uh, emphasis that the Obama administration has put on healthcare is, is to get that into the hands of the patient and make them more accountable. And that's where we come into play. Okay. Now we're not newcomers to this environment by any means. We actually have 30 years of uh, experience in the healthcare space as one of the top healthcare information service providers, systems vendors uh, in the small and medium community, uh, community hospital market. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is this is something that uh, is kind of a natural progression to mm -hmm. us as we started looking at you know where are where is the gap, where is the opportunity, mm -hmm. uh, where is the outlier um, potential here, mm -hmm. and so we look at it from a standpoint of patient engagement, which 
uh, obviously starts with uh, co collecting information about the patient, getting them to pay their bill, and even engaging the, uh, the patient's extended family and friends mm -hmm. to get them more involved in accountability efforts and things like that. So from a, you know, it, the whole thing gets wrapped up into what's commonly called the, a patient portal. Mm -hmm. right. So uh, that's definitely, you're going to encounter a big data problem there. You've got uh, multiple data sources. We were talking earlier a little bit about uh, some of the, a lot of the software and, uh, that's developed around the medical community is proprietary, different formats, and there's some issues around, uh, around uh, interoperability there. Um, talk a little bit about how kind of the proliferation of data sources is impacting uh, your business. It's, that is significant. Healthcare has standards of, of sorts. Uh, there's an organization called HL7 that kind of standardizes, mm -hmm. you know, what the what the data can be and how it can be formatted. Mm -hmm. But because we're all so different, there is no, you know, rubber stamp kind of data format. Mm -hmm. Each episode of care is different, like I said. So as a result, um, everything is optional. All of the data that can go into a CCD is essentially optional because. Mm -hmm. Like I said, you may not get your cholesterol checked, you know, on e on every right. visit, you know. Um, but uh, you know, take that a step further. Not only is that dynamic, but you also have um, some limited standards and limited, especially limited adoption of standards among different vendors. Mm. So right. whether it's uh, you know a larger GE system or a McKesson or a Meditech or or whatever, each of these systems has some limitations of their own, mm -hmm. and you know, let's face it, there's there's a little bit of territory there, and there's some yeah. some turf warfare. Nobody really wants to have to play with their competitor. Uh, this mm -hmm. most recent legislation is kind of forcing the issue. Right, that's interesting because we were talking earlier, John, about kind of the the need in big data environments for. You know, to, the vendors need to balance, you know, of course they want to build their business, but there has to be interoperability, uh, and you have to be able to play nice together in a, in a sense, because that's really what makes big data big data, the ability to bring data together from multiple sources, from multiple systems, uh, that might not really have anything to do with each other, but when you combine data sources, you get some new insights that you might not have thought of before. Um, so, you know, let's talk about some of the real use cases, I mean, uh, of both your platform and just kind of healthcare, uh, big data analytics, and and applications in general. I mean, what are we talking about? We hear, you know, from the Obama administration. We, we see it from, you know, in the press about how big data can really help uh, lower costs in the healthcare world and, you know, improve outcomes, which obviously is what everybody wants. So, what are some of the, some, what are some of the real use cases that you think are a real practical now, practical reality based on what you guys are doing and what you're seeing in the industry? I think you have to take a look at what are the different um, stakeholders in healthcare. Obviously, we have the patient, and that's probably the most atomic level of, of care, uh, a single episode of care being, you know, or a visit to the doctor's office being mm -hmm. the most, uh, you know, the, the smallest, most atomic, you know, component. The, the patient is generally more interested in knowing, okay, what were the results of my most recent lab test? They're not as interested in the long-term perspective or the long-term view of their care like a doctor would be. Mm -hmm. look, the doctor is going to be looking more at, you know, what is your cholesterol doing over time? Uh, what is your... Uh, you know, what is your uh, uh, fluid intake after having congestive heart failure? Uh, what's happening with your, you know, your blood pressure monitor, blood glucose? It, it just goes on and mm -hmm. on and on. But the doctor's looking at more of a continuum of care. Mm -hmm. Then you take a, another step out and you have a completely different perspective on the data in that you have uh, a hospital or uh, even a, a region that is interested in things that are, are peculiar to that region. You know, mm -hmm. Some areas have a higher rate of diabetes than other areas. Um, obesity is more common in certain areas than in other areas. Those regions want to look at the data in a very different way. Mm -hmm. uh, step it out a little bit further and you start looking at a national and international level and we have public health and immunization concerns and we want to know what's this next flu outbreak going to do and how do we project where, uh, where the flu is headed next? You know, how, do we, how do we stop these things before they become uh, financial catastrophes? Right, so it very much depends on your perspective and, and exactly. where you're coming from, interesting. So uh, we're here at uh, Cassandra Summit, so talk a little bit about what you guys are doing with Cassandra kind of under the covers and, and how, is, uh, how did you kind of come to use Cassandra? Uh, you know, we've been talking a lot today about the, kind of the horse race between the different NoSQL databases and just you know, tell, so kind of walk us through your, your experience with Cassandra. Well, 
When we started approaching the issue of, you know, looking at patient data and gathering a tremendous amount of patient data into a single source, uh, there was no question from the very beginning that a, a typical relational database was not going to solve the problem. Mm -hmm. You simply can't take something as fluid as an individual's health and put it into a two-dimensional structure. So uh, the next step was, well, how do we get this information? We looked at it and said, well, you know what, we get this in a, a document, an XML document, and we could, you know, let's treat this like document management. We'll just take all these documents, we'll stick them in and we'll, mm -hmm. you know, we'll run through these things and index them and we'll just do, you know, free text search and pretend we're Google. Uh, after a couple of uh, failed attempts at that, we realized that wasn't going to work, but we came pretty close. The biggest problem we found uh, in our implementation was that we had a threshold of about 20,000 new patients per hour, and that's where it kind of peaked out. And in order to go any bigger, uh, we were going to have to upscale tremendously. We were going to have to we were going to have to go, you know, bigger instead of broader. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's when we, we kind of hit the brakes and said, okay, what are our options here? We looked very quickly at uh, Cassandra and uh, several of the other uh, technologies out, big data technologies out there, and uh, kind of narrowed in on Cassandra as being a good, really the ideal choice for us. Mm -hmm. uh, we like the Hadoop integration. Mm -hmm. All of this looked really good. The one missing piece that uh, we had trouble finding was the kind of free text search capabilities that we needed. The kind of thing that a document management system we thought might help us out with. That wasn't, that wasn't available. And we need that because doctor's notes are freehand. They're not codified. So how do you get you know, into the doctor's notes and try and do some intelligent analytics and try and find every reference to congestive heart failure, because it could be CHF, it could be misspelled, you know? There could, there could be other, you know, any number of symptoms in the doctor's notes that we need to get to as well. Getting that out of big data was a, was a, a concern of ours, but, uh, and, and we looked very hard at solar and what was going to integrate solar. When Datastax came out with the solar integration, mm -hmm. that's when we said, okay, we think we might have something here. And so far it's been, very successful for us. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So, yeah, talk about using, uh, you know, it, it is an open source technology, there's the kind of community mm -hmm. associated with it. Um, t tell us a little bit about your kind of, well, your thoughts on this show and kind of the attendees here, and, and but more generally the, uh, the Cassandra community. And, and in terms of uh, your decision to go with Cassandra, uh, how much did the community play into that? In other words, you know, obviously you want a thriving community that's building new, new uh, and innovative ways to use the use the platform. Um, and how much did that kind of come into your thinking when we're looking at different technologies? The the very first thing we look at is how active is is the community when mm -hmm. it comes to open source, because the last thing you want to do is hedge your bet on something that is floundering mm -hmm. or headed in the wrong direction. The Cassandra community has been very much alive and vibrant for a considerable period of time. Mm -hmm. So that, that immediately took care of our concerns. The next concern was, um, particularly with regard to you know, solar integration, we didn't want to have to roll our own. You know, we're solving healthcare problems, we don't want to have to solve big data problems. We don't want to have to write the integration of solar into, um, into a, a technology stack that includes Cassandra. So finding a company like Datastax to um, kind of provide that for us really pushed us over the edge, and uh, you know the the, the uh, support has just been phenomenal from the community and from the company. So, all right. So, here's a hard question. Let's let's solve the problem. What is it going to take to increase adoption of uh, patient portals and other kind of big data uh, sponsored technologies to really kind of create the kind of environment where we really can take advantage of data and analytics to improve healthcare in terms of both the price, lowering prices, and, and improving outcomes at the same time. Because obviously it's a huge issue uh, on the national level, uh, you know, a lot of talk in the election about it. Um, what is it going to take to really go get to that next step and actually see some significant adoption? Uh, it starts with education, obviously. Um, people have to, have to learn to take a look at the problem a little differently. And they have to look at it from a you know, a, a more, a thinner, more purpose-built 
application, not something for more general purpose at, like a relational database. Uh, the second thing it's going to take is some success stories. And uh, we're not the only ones doing big data in healthcare. There are a few others, but there's not a lot. When you consider the size of the industry and the number of, of players that are taking a big data approach, it's, uh, it's surprisingly light, but you know, big data is uh, still, still ramping up. It's still in its, its early stages of adoption, I think, in more than just our industry. And that's really the reason why we're here. You know, we brought our, our power hitters out here to uh, do a little cross-training. You know, we want them to be able to spend some time rubbing elbows with people in other industries solving similar problems and see if we can't find some creative uh, implementations and, and best practices of what those people are doing and make it apply to us as well. Yeah, I mean, well, that's one of the real benefits of kind of the open source community. And, right. Uh, it's really a, a collaborative environment that you don't necessarily get in, in other uh, types of technology approaches, more proprietary approaches. That's right. Carl Terrell, thanks for coming on theCUBE. We really appreciate it. You guys are in a, a growing market. Obviously, there needs to be some transformation um, in healthcare. And cool. you guys are doing some good work there. Appreciate the time. The goal is to make the transformation as painless as possible. Uh, the, the, you know, a lot of people are, are attempting to shoehorn the industry into uh, a new way of doing business, a new d business model, and, and change workflows. And I think that's part of the reason why there's been so much of a resistance to the adoption of new technologies and new ideas. Well, we've seen the iPad certainly break hold of uh, executives at med levels and other organizations in business, like at SAP we've heard, you know, the CEO, I want it on this, you know, so with the iPad, you know, you think the tablets are great tools you know, for uh, healthcare workers, doctors, et cetera, so maybe that'll be the catalyst to, exactly. to uh, bust down the, uh, that rock on the river that's it, holding all the water back. It definitely is. We're seeing a tremendous amount of uh, interest in our, yeah. our mobile devices. Mobile, mobile cloud, great, perfect storm for innovation. That's right. Uh, Terrell, thanks for coming to theCUBE. We'll be right back with our next guest after this break <laughs> uh, here inside theCUBE, live at Cassandra Summit uh, 2012, uh, DataStax's event. This is SiliconANGLE, Wikibon's theCUBE. <laughs>